Well, hello and welcome to another episode of EKU Online's eCast series. EKU's online's mission is to change lives by providing access to affordable and high quality degree programs in meaningful disciplines that positively impact our society. We thank you for joining us. Today, we're joined by Dr. Brooke Bentley, Chair and Full Professor of Eastern Kentucky University's School of Nursing. She has been a registered nurse for nearly 28 years and a Family Nurse Practitioner, or FNP, for 24 years. She started her nursing career in 1993 in the Cardiac Intensive Care Unit. She then practiced as an RN in the post-anesthesia care unit prior to becoming an FNP. As a FNP, she has experience in women's health, urgent care, hospice, and college health. She began teaching at EKU in 1998 in the BSN program. In 2013, she began teaching in the FNP program and also became coordinator of the program. She accepted the position of School of Nursing Associate Chair in 2018 and Chair in 2019. Dr. Bentley's BSN and MSN degrees are from EKU, and her PhD is from the University of Kentucky with an emphasis in nursing research related to dietary sodium and heart failure patients. Welcome, Dr. Bentley, and thank you so much for your time today. We genuinely appreciate it. Well, let's jump right in. As we begin our discussion, Dr. Bentley, it's clear that your scope of oversight and responsibility have increased tremendously now that you are the chair of the School of Nursing. What's that transition been like for you? Well, the transition's probably not been quite as smooth as I had hoped. There were definitely some unexpected hurdles. Um, as soon as I became chair, we decided to reopen our Associate of Science and Nursing program. Um, so, you know, that was a big task at hand. The university and throughout the state, we had some fairly significant budget cuts. Um, but then in the spring of my first year, we had the COVID pandemic drastically changed everything. Um, none of our undergraduate programs are online. So that quickly, within a week, we had to transition all of our programs to fully online. Many of our faculty had not taught online before. So those that had jumped right in and helped everyone learn. Um, more importantly, our students were not um, used to being fully online. So that created a, a big transition to teach nursing content in a new format. Our clinical agencies um, were not able to continue to accept the students into their clinical sites. So temporarily, we had to transition into increasing simulation so that we could mimic some clinical scenarios for our students. So the first year has been quite, was quite a transition. Well, it sounds like uh, many challenges that had to be faced. Um, just for our listeners' sake, can you describe for us what units actually make up the School of Nursing? We have our Associate of Science in Nursing degree, which is two years. Uh, we have our traditional baccalaureate program, which is four. We also have a baccalaureate room for second degree students. And in this program, you can have a four-year degree in any field and come back and get a bachelor's degree in nursing in 21 months. We also have a, a, those two programs, those three programs that are undergraduate are fully on campus. Our online programs, we have an RN to BSN program. So if you have your two-year nursing degree, you can come back fully online and get your uh, four-year degree. We also have two master's programs fully online in the areas of family nurse practitioner and psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. And then we have a doctoral program with a specialty in organizational leadership. Uh, I've worked with eCampus for a number of years now, and I didn't realize it was that extensive. It's, uh, it's very impressive. Well, Dr. Bentley, you're known to be an outstanding instructor, both online and in the classroom. In your opinion, where do you see the current future of nursing education going? Um, 
In, in other words, will online programs continue to grow or do you see the pendulum swinging back to either a spring teaching or a high situation? I think currently we'll continue to see online grow. Our students are already a registered nurse. So they're working full time. They're coming back to advance their education. This is a very uh, flexible program for them. They're able to work full time, have children, um, have other responsibilities and roles that they must fulfill, yet be able to come back to school. And so I think that flexibility is very appealing to many students. Um, I think we will continue to see the online grow. I wish I could predict if the pendulum would swing back, but um, I'm not sure. You know, most things in life we do see kind of continue and, and come back. So perhaps it will, but I'm unsure at this point. Well, do you see, as part of that, kind of a follow-up question, do you see the demand for nurses continuing to grow? I, I mean, it seems like to me that the job market is currently in huge demand for qualified nurses. Do you think you're going to reach a saturation point, or do you think the demand is just going to continue to grow as it has been? We absolutely will not see a saturation point for a long time. Uh, we currently have an aging nursing profession. So we have more nurses retiring than currently coming in. Um, we also have seen the pandemic take its toll on the, the physical, emotional, and mental health of nurses. So I think we have um, some nurses that may step out temporarily. Um, some may step out permanently. Uh, but on the other side, we also see people really wanting to come in and join the healthcare workforce and to be on the front lines. And so we are seeing more people entering nursing also. Where do you see right now some of our graduates working? Uh, is it mostly in the hospital field or are they in private practice or wh where do they work? Where do your graduates work? Since we have seven programs that range from the Associate of Science in Nursing to their doctorate, we see graduates in all settings. We see them, of course, in, in the most familiar hospital settings um, with, in various locations within the acute care from the emergency room to obstetrics to um, operating room, ICU. But our master's programs, our nurse practitioners are primarily in primary care. So they're in the communities in clinics um, that may be owned by a larger organization, but we do have some nurse practitioners in their own private clinics that they are running. We have uh, students literally across the U.S. Our um, FMP program currently, we have students in 18 states, and our psychiatric mental health program has students in 40 states. So we are spread out in, you know, all types of settings, even the community settings and health departments, school systems. So nursing is something that there's a lot of flexibility in the type of work you choose. Is there a huge need in the rural communities like in Eastern Kentucky for nursing or, or has that been kind of not saturated, but has there been enough nursing professionals gone to the rural areas? Currently the workforce need is greatest in the rural areas. Um, mm -hmm. Often see um, students will leave the rural area to go to school and then they may not return. Um, one of the uh, large reasons that we started the Associate of Science program back again is that we had um, hospital administrators come to us from, from several rural areas. And they said, you know, I need nurses and I need nurses fast. Um, we see the ASN prepared nurses often more frequently in rural areas. So there was a big need for this program. Well, with the program that, um, that we're most familiar with completely online, what do you see the demographics of your student population looking like? In, in other words, what kind of students is the online programs attracting and what kind of students actually find success in that, in that realm? Definitely, we see your non-traditional older students. Um, again, it's because they're already licensed. They already have one degree and they're coming back for more. The flexibility allows them to, you know, accommodate where they 
they are in life. You know, some of them may be caregivers for aging parents. Um, some of them may be, you know, parents of several children. Um, but online is appealing because of that flexibility. However, the online student that is most successful is that online student that is very um, self-motivated, very organized, um, keeps a very timely schedule and stays on task. Um, so those are the students that we see as most successful. Well, as you meet and advise students, Dr. Bentley, how do you respond to the question as to why they ought to enroll not only in the nursing program um, here at EKU, but there are so many other options in the medical field and so many other schools to choose from. So why choose the nursing program here at EKU? What makes us different or unique? I think there are several reasons to choose us. Um, you know, we are fully accredited and that is something that you want your nursing program to be. We also have very high um, pass rates of the national licensing exam that students must take after graduation. Um, our pass rates remain between 96 and 100 um, percent, and so that is, those are very high rates, especially when you compare with other schools, so we're, we're very proud of that. Um, EKU has built a reputation in their nursing profession in this area, and our, our senior year, our students have um, various clinical agencies that contact us that want to come in and spend some time with our students to recruit them. So our students are highly recruited. Um, most all of them who want a job prior to graduation, they have a job and usually not just a job, but they've had multiple offers and they have some choices in what they will choose for their first job. That's very impressive, uh, especially the pass rate. That, that's, I can't think of many schools that can boast about that. Um, I want to switch gears here just a little bit and go back to something you said earlier. Um, it's a question related to the pandemic. Now, the pandemic has lasted for well over a year now. You know, I, I'm assuming many of the nurses have literally been on the front lines. Um, and you talked a few minutes ago about, you know, not reaching a saturation point. But was there or is there much attrition or have you seen a decrease in the number of students enrolling in nursing because they don't want to go into the pandemic world? I think one area that we've seen some attrition are nurses who have their years in for retirement, but just hadn't quite yet decided to do that. I think some of them have, um, the pandemic has influenced them to kind of maybe it's time to go ahead and retire. Um, it has taken a physical toll, um, but more than a physical toll, I think that we've seen a lot of mental health issues that have come with this, um, the anxiety, um, you know, just the fatigue on top of that, um, some depression. So I think it's very important right now that uh, nurses are practicing self-care. Um, we have not seen a decrease in our enrollment. And in fact, our enrollments for this fall, um, well, our um, applications for this fall are uh, at, at very high numbers. Um, so I do think that there are people who want to make a difference. You know, this is a historical time in the medical field. And I think people want to help others. It's been good to see that, you know, we genuinely are still a very caring society. You know, we, we see a lot of negativity in the news, but, but overall, I think people want to help each other. And this is a career that you can certainly do that. You can make a difference. Well, thank you. That's uh, reassuring. And it's um, the quality of this on a personal side, there's a, um, as I've been, through different things at the hospital or with doctor's offices, um, the nurses are what really make the difference. Um, went in for a procedure last year and it was the nurses who put me at ease and who made the, the experience uh, a positive one where it could have been a very negative one. Um, so I really appreciate that. And, and I often ask them, where did you get your degree from? 
And more times than not, they've said Eastern. So that's, that's a good thing. Well, Dr. Bentley, um, if you would, tell our listeners a little bit about your personal interests. What is it you like to do in your, if you do have this, in your spare time? I recently became an empty nester. I have two sons that are both now in college. And so that's kind of allowed me to, you know, as a parent, return to some of my own personal interests. But um, jogging is a big interest of mine. I will jog four or five mornings a week. Um, that's just a way for me to practice self-care. It, it kind of lets me clear my mind, prepare for my day, you know, just gives me energy and and, and positive energy. Um, I also love to hike. Hiking is probably one of my favorite personal interests. Um, Last year, a couple of friends and I turned 50, and so we decided to take a trip to Arizona. Um, We did some hiking in Sedona and just beautiful area. Um, In fact, we decided to make that an annual routine, so this year we are going to California to Yosemite, and we are super excited Mm -hmm. about that. Uh, my most recent personal interest is I am trying to take up golf. I'm not sure that's going to be as relaxing as some of my other interests. <laughs> it's uh, starting off a little frustrating, so I'm not sure how that will go. But I do think it's important that nurses do practice self-care. Um, and, you know, as the chair of the department, I think it's important that I role model self-care. So we do need to find time. Um, to step away from work and the stressors in life and, and just to have some relaxation. Do you find that there are times where you have to talk to some of your faculty or, or nursing friends and tell them that they need to have self-care? Because that is so vital, as you've said. Do you find yourself having to give that advice to some of your friends? I think nurses in general, we have to give that advice to each other. You know, mm-hmm. you're called to this usually because you are a very caring, giving person. And we're used to taking care of everyone else and not taking care of ourselves. So I do think that's something that we definitely stop and remind each other to do. And it's difficult to take care of others if you're not taking care of yourself. Well, as we wrap up, Dr. Bentley, I I just would like to ask you, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? Anything about the program? Anything about you? Uh, anything about the pandemic, anything about Eastern that you'd like to share with our, with our listeners as a final, uh, as final comments? I guess my final comment would be just that nursing is a wonderful profession. Um, you know, it's very rewarding when you can help others. Um, it's rewarding to know that um, although you may be exhausted after a 12 hour shift that you've made a difference that you've helped a patient or you've helped their family member. The other great thing about nursing is the flexibility of having different specialty areas you can go into, um, different shifts. Um, It's easy to travel. It's easy to find jobs if you need to relocate. So, you know, often I second guess myself on things in life, but one thing I have never looked back on or never regretted or thought twice about is the profession that I chose. And I chose an an awesome profession and I think it's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Bentley. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you and and getting to know you a little bit better. And it's been interesting learning a little bit more about the School of Nursing as well um, in the programs that we have here at EKU. So thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. We're proud of our programs and always happy to tell others about them.